Hey, Paddle Talking World Sand Drag News fans. You can watch every episode on World Sand Drag News YouTube, along with all of our other content, which is badass sand drag racing. Or you can find us on Spotify by searching for Paddle Talk. Check out our Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as well for more content on sand drag racing. Don't forget to check out WorldSandDragNews.com for our list of world records, a schedule of events, articles from past races, and much more. Don't forget to buy our sponsor stuff. This episode is brought to you by Murray Power Sports. Murray Power Sports is a very small, family-owned and operated business. Tim and Ginger Murray are off-road enthusiasts who turn their passion for the outdoors into a business, offering everything from ATV, UTV, and motorcycle service and repair to nearly any aftermarket parts and accessories, along with wheels and tires. But what they've been most known for in recent years is their custom off-road wrap kits. They can help create a unique design that fits your style from mild to wild. Visit murraypowersports.com, Facebook, and Instagram at murraypowersports. Once again, visit murraypowersports.com, also their Facebook and Instagram at murraypowersports. All right, welcome to another episode of Paddle Talk. We are back with Caleb Mings is with us today, and joined us. joining us this whole episode is our very good friend, Paul Moore from Moore Racing. He does the National Sand Drag Records as well. So we're very happy to have him on with us as well. And then we'll also have an interview with Esteban Juarez, the track promoter at Dome Valley Raceway, in just a moment. But this is the Pro Sand Drag Association Dome Valley Raceway uh, race week. And uh, we are recording this on Tuesday. So today is the first day of Test and Tune. And we haven't heard anything crazy yet, but we know there's probably some cool bikes laying down some awesome numbers. But before we get into all the PSDA stuff, uh, we're going to have Paul Moore just do a quick introduction about himself. So take it away, Paul. Go ahead and introduce yourself to our listeners. Hey, guys. Man, just first off, appreciate what you guys do. Appreciate what you guys do for the sport. Appreciate you having me on. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, um, I'm Paul Moore. Uh, man, I've been doing this, uh, doing this uh, ATV side of things probably since uh, around 2006, 2007. Um you know, we uh, start chasing numbers and, uh, you know, the, like, like any addiction, you start off small and you, uh, you let it snowball into you know, what it's become today. And, um, you know, Steph and I had, uh, gosh, over half a dozen, um, you know, world records between PSDA and national sand drag records, world sand drag news records as well. Track records primarily focus on the, uh, the snowmobile side of things, um, I would say that's probably our specialty, uh, these old belt slippers. So, uh, yeah, pretty excited to be here today. Um, you know, later on in the show, we could talk a little bit about the bikes or whatever. We've got, uh, you know, a whole, whole shop full here. Uh, we've got Moose Knuckle, um, which was the first bike to ever make a two-second pass. That was back in 2020. Definitely in a 296, um, you know, laid down that. We've got a slew of other triples laying around here. So uh, excited to talk to you guys. This is a big, big week for us, uh, PSDA kicking off the uh, 2024 year uh, out in Arizona. So uh, we're excited, man, as as, as far as like, uh, you know, TV racers, like uh, this is like opening day for us. So, uh, so happy to be here and happy to uh, happy to have the season started, man. Absolutely. Good to have you here, Paul. And, you know, obviously uh, very decorated in your own respect for uh, everything you've done for the sport. We love what you guys have done with the national sand drag records. So if you guys, uh, aren't following their page already, make sure you guys go and do that. Uh, NSDR kind of doing a different spin from what WCN or PSCA does for the records. Uh, lots of cool things with that with track records. So if you guys are chasing numbers, maybe you don't have the quickest bike out there for a particular class, you could definitely go chase some track records as well. And that's one thing that's really cool with with uh, what you guys are doing. Definitely some uh, unique stuff on the record books as well. I know you guys have some stuff for like V-Twins and stuff. Isn't that right? So what we wanted to do with National Sand Drag Records is we kind of wanted to bridge the gap kind of, I would say, between PSDA and, and what you guys do there at World Sand Drag News. Um, you know, with a PSDA style record book, it's as legit as it comes as far as, you know, they've got six or seven, um, you know, board members at each race. They've got, you know, um, three races a year, usually three, three or four races a year. And you can break the records at one of their three or four races a year. Um what we wanted to do at National Sand Drag Records is we wanted you wanted to recognize some of the tracks that PSDA didn't go to, and also give give racers a few more opportunities a year um, 
to, to really demonstrate their bikes. So what we do uh, with National Sand Drag Records is we partner with, um, I think we have six tracks this year. And what we do is we, we have track reps at each track. We measure the length of the track. Um, they sign slips. They check fuel just like they would like at a standard PSDA race. But we, where we different is, is that we, we partner with six tracks and you're able to break a national sand drag record record at any of our partner tracks at any of their public events. So if you were to break a record, all you would do is just go uh, to the track rack and say, Hey, uh, you know, I broke a record. They would check your fuel, sign your slips, and then you'd submit into us. And then we would enter it in the record book. So it, you know, it kind of bridges the gap between PSDA world sand drag news, um, you know, a little bit of a middle ground right there so uh we're excited about it and we do get a chance to recognize um you know some of the subgroups that aren't recognized in other in other areas like dirt bikes um you know we have two and four stroke dirt bikes uh, we have the v twin stuff um which you know the v twin stuff uh, kind of underground there's some really fast stuff out there like there's there's some v twins out there making horsepower numbers you know, upwards of what we make with our four cylinder uh, two stroke bike so mm -hmm. um you know they're they're really pushing these turbo uh, four stroke v twins really hard we do have a motorcycle record as well where uh you know the harleys and the uh the gizmos of the world can can play and participate as well so but yeah that's that's kind of what um you know, what we aim to do there with uh, National Sand Drag Records. And, uh, you know, we look forward to the 2024 season with our partner tracks and everybody, uh, you know, in our race family. Absolutely. Hey, we just got uh, joined here by uh, Ricky Thorpe. Rick, how's it going? What's up, Caleb? I'm surprised you're not out the track yet. When are you leaving? Uh, I'm going out there Wednesday night. So going to be nice. a little bit of a start there. But um, we're definitely going to get uh, into talking about more PSCA stuff in a little bit. I was about to say, what did I miss? <laughs> Not too much. We just kind of had a little intro with Paul here. I talked a little bit about um, his deal with the uh, NSDR um, partner tracks and everything. I think this is probably a good time to get into uh, what you've got going on, Paul. You've got a turbo chassis giveaway. Tell us a little bit about that and how that came about. So, yeah, basically, man, you know, we, do, we do the more racing stuff, um, you know, little side business and how, you know, that really started with just like, man, we bought so many parts. Like we started getting hooked up with distributors because we, you know, for our own personal stuff, we were buying so many parts, um, you know, and, and when you, you're buying as many parts as we buy and paying retail, we really just wanted to like, you know, get a discount. Uh, so then like we started selling stuff and then, you know, kind of snowballed into um, Steph was like, Hey, let's, you know, let's, let's just like, make this like legit and you know so we did the llc thing um you know and then you know after her accident last year um you know i was at a crossroads I, you know i was talking to ricky about it um because i've known ricky a long time and he's, he's one of these key players in the sport that you know like if i want to like get a pulse on the sport like i i'll text ricky and be like hey ricky like what do you think you told ricky ricky look dude like it's a lot of work steph was a cpa she took care of all the books i didn't have to worry about anything other than just ordering parts and dealing with customers you know steph took care of all the stuff behind the scenes so you know, i told ricky hey man i'm either going to close this down or i'm going to swing for the fences um you know and uh you know i thought about it and i you know and, and ricky and i talked and like steph steph would want us to swing for the fences because that was the type of type of girl she was so um you know so you know i i called jordan up and i said jordan i said listen man I want to buy a chassis off of you. And he's like, well, you know, like, what are you going to do with a Banshee turbo chassis? I mean, I'm going to give it away this year. He's like, he's like, give it away. And I'm like, yeah, dude, like, for free. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're giving away a free turbo chassis this year. And all you have to do is just buy the parts that you would normally buy. And when you do, I like, write down like, you know, how many entries you get. Um, so the standard deal is like for every $10 you spend on parts, you get an entry into the raffle. Um, and then we've also been doing some giveaway stuff here recently um, to help kind of promote, move parts. Um, and, uh, you know, th those are dollar for dollar. So if you spend $10, you get 10 entries. Um, so, you know, we have some people here that are really racking up, um, you know, some, some, you know, entries into this free giveaway. We're excited about it. I don't think anybody's like, you know, literally giving a chassis away for free, you know, um, yet. So we're, we're, we're pretty excited. We're pretty excited. About, and, and it's really just a way of like, you know, saying like, Hey man, if you're going to spend this money, spend it with us. Um, you know, so it's hard to compete. Like as a business owner, it's hard to compete with an Amazon or an eBay or somebody like that. Um, 
you know, but but I promise you, Jeff Bezos ain't giving you a turbo chassis. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about it. Um, you know, and I'll have to talk about it. My goal is to get to Louisiana this year, like physically be there um, on location with the chassis, and we're going to do it there. That is my goal. Um, but it's been, I think, since 2019 or maybe even before that, um, since we've been in Louisiana. It's just tough being – my, my normal day-to-day -day job is being a school teacher. So I teach middle school science. So, uh, you know, getting off during the school year is just really tough for us. But uh, my goal is to give it away uh, this year at Louisiana, um, at Gilbert. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, get our name out there, man. Give this thing away. So. Absolutely. And we, I, I will say this for everybody that doesn't really know a lot with the, the ATV side of the world, uh, turbo chassis, Jordan over there, that is some of the most badass chassis that you could possibly have in the sport. They're kind of set up a, a sort of an OEM type Banshee lookalike, but um, yeah. they're stretched way out. So they get the wheelbase in there, the stability. Paul, what, what is the actual stretch on that that you guys are doing? You haven't really talked about it yet. You know, uh, Jordan is so busy. He basically just puts you in line. So, um, you know, I talked to Jordan. Like, I want to order, order a chassis. He wouldn't even take any money. Like, that's just the type of guy Jordan is. Like, he is the, the best guy in the sport. So he's like, he's like, you're in line. When we get closer, we can decide on, you know, on the direction we want to go. Because, you know, we really want to do like a one-size-fits-all kind of deal to where it'll work for everybody. Um, and I, I think, you know, not not having specifics yet is probably a good thing because you know the sport's changing like you know people are building no bar stuff crazy no bar stuff like i saw ricky um just put the pumpkin back together which was like you talk about throwback thursday the pumpkin coming back to life so you know waiting a little bit longer in the season and when jordan calls me up and says hey man your chassis's next you know i'm going to call the people in the sport that i know you have a pulse on stuff i'm going to call the rickies i'm going to call the sean reeves i'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like hey what should we do what do we want to give away you know um so whether it's a plus 20 or a plus 26 or a plus 18 i you know i don't know um so uh it's 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 as far as stretch on stuff dimensions we haven't decided on that yet um but you know it'll, it'll be the latest greatest you know, thing that Jordan's got to offer. Cause you know, I, I don't do half ass, man. Like if, if, if I'm giving it away, if I'm giving it away, it's going to be something badass. So. Right on, right on Ricky. Uh, you, you've got a couple of those turbo chassis in your corner. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the Testament of, of Jordan's chassis designs and how will they work in the sport? Really? I could, I could sit here and talk for an hour about uh, the experiences I've had with working with Jordan over the last thing. I've been using Jordan's tr chassis uh, exclusively, turbo chassis, since I think I, we're going on year number eight. I think 2016, I went right. But you you go to the track, you see him run. You, we we all we've all been to the track enough to you you, you look at what is working. You you see. Chassis after chassis, Jordan produced over the years. He developed. Uh, he's the only guy in the sport that was able to develop a real um, production style chassis. That just it's it's hard to do in in sand drags with anything, whether it's a part or anything. I mean, Paul, like you were saying, it's hard. It's it's hard to it's hard to come up with uh, something that hasn't been done or a production. Uh, you know, a production style chassis where someone can call Jordan and say, hey, I'm doing a 650. I want it to be this out the rear, this out the front. Usually chassis builders, I get you guys can agree. I would say it's just all custom, all all custom, right? You just have a chassis guy builds you the custom chassis. There really wasn't a production as far to my knowledge. Um that you could get until Jordan came along with these stock replicas, like you were saying there, that's what you call them as a stock replica. And honestly, uh, like I said, my ADD already going crazy, just thinking about the turbo chassis. In my opinion, uh, Jordan is the best in the business. There's a lot of great chassis builders. I have a lot of respect for the Ellingtons, the Brian Armstrongs, the SpongeBob chassis from you know, SSR, Caleb. I know you like the SpongeBob's and the SSR. To this day, Paul, I would say you would agree. Uh, SSR, 
and SpongeBob style. Ch- I mean, those SpongeBob's and those SSR still to this day making a resurgence in the weight class. Uh, since we're on the topic of chassis, sorry to branch off here a little bit, but uh, we don't ever have AT- other ATV guys on here. So we got you, I got you and Paul on here at the same time tonight. It's hard not to uh, get a little crazy right now, but what do you think, Paul? You think that, um, you know, we're talking about the latest and greatest, but let me, let me get your thoughts on like, the, I know you got a SpongeBob, you have, you probably have Jonathan SpongeBob that I sold him in there still right now in the shop. Probably don't you? I do. Uh, I'm actually, <laughs> I- I'm looking at it right now. Um, uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to flip this thing around here, Ricky. I don't know if you can see me or not, but, uh, I've actually, I've got two SpongeBob's in here. Um, oh, shoot. <laughs> hey, let's see how long it takes him to identify this chassis. All right. You ready, Ricky? Here we go. Whose is it? Oh, I know that. That's a that's a from Panama City. Yep, yep, yep. yep you know yep. it, Panama, right? Panama City, Florida, baby. Hey, let me show you this. All the wing arm. He's got all of it. Look at it. All, all of it. Well, see, I thought you were just back at the front end again when you started with that baby, but that's just the, the rear end is just as long as the front. That might be the first <laughs> evenly distributed uh length of uh, on a on a spongebob ever done look at that baby caleb you could put a hemi in that thing <laughs> yeah and then uh, yeah and then uh, yeah we're kicking hey, real it. quick the, whenever you're talking it shows you on the youtube just remember that oh billy when he's showing something cool <laughs> hey, hey uh yeah so and here's spongebob number two in here so uh you know here's uh this is z1 this is jonathan's z1 turbo deal and uh it Ooh. cut apart uh, SpongeBob. So, wow, that's um, interesting. I didn't know he was going with the Z1. I forgot. I thought he was doing like a motorcycle motor at the time or something. That's pretty cool. Z1, yeah. I like it. Yeah, that's which a that's lot of people going to Z1 nowadays. Yeah, that's, I mean that's that's it. I mean it's got a link link ECU. Uh, you know, don't you know? We're I don't think we're we're not aiming to make the power with it that you know some of the big Z ones are, but I think we're going to be a lot lighter. So. You know, should Paul, be. I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that going to be the first bike with a Z1 where the, the ride is actually going to be sitting over the motor? You know, Caleb, I, I don't think we're going to be the first, um, but I would say it's probably the first in the circle of things. Um, I know there's a couple of Z1 things out running some hard pack in, um, in Pennsylvania. Um, and I think there's uh, there's a Z1 floating around down south that came up from around Wisconsin. Um, so... You know, but yeah, I mean, this one's cool. We call this bike long time. I think we, you know, we started on it in 2020, um, you know, was, it was when we started on this thing. So uh, it's, so you know, it's definitely, definitely been a while. So we, we started on this bike, cut it in half before we even uh, bent the first tube for Steph's bike here, uh, her triple DMX leech. So that thing was, you know, basically on the track, uh, you know, racing and retired before, uh, before they leave, his- leave it to Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan. Yeah, poor John. Poor John. He's gonna watch this video and, and he's gonna cuss me out. So, uh... <laughs> well, hey, I must say, Paul, I love your naming convention for your chassis. It's it's one of my favorite things. Whenever you got you a new bike coming, say like, half of my Dude, what is gonna be the uh, name? Oh, oh, show us the rest of that shop. Oh, I yeah, you want? Uh, uh, yeah, let's, shop? Do let's go. To I was gonna do. Let's I was gonna do it bikes. later, but, but we're this deep. Let's just. Let's <laughs> rest what do you got? All right, there? so so we can't say that one now. I'm just kidding. It's cheese. So this is cheese dick. I love it. This is yeah. This is cheese dick. That's um, actually my so, racing number, also. So that's awesome. Oh, that's that's a good number. Um, it's a great. So number. this and this, this is leech. This is leech. This is Steph's triple DMX. I'm a uh, man, we for have, that triple DMX, man. That's, I know it, man. I know it. We uh, heard about, oh my god. Thing, Show that again. What does that say there? It says until we line up again, and then it's got Steph Taylor and her birthday and and. and um, you know, on there. So there's Jack. He's like hey, Jack. looking at mom's bike. Uh, yep, Jack so, uh, it up. Yeah. So yeah, cheese dick. We got long time. Uh, we got the trail bike here. Literally, uh, my daughter will ride her little razor in the woods and shit. Um, and I will follow her on the trail bike and trail ride this thing. Um, pretty cool bike. It's actually been a 312. And like, don't get me wrong. I will tr- like I ride it on the trails behind my house, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that so uh, in the drum for years. Yes, uh, this is a customer bike, little six seventy bike. I'm gonna call it my little piece of shit. It's been a project. This thing here, this is my. We call it the six seventy bike. It's been a three o two. It's been a three o two. Um, 
it's uh we call it the 670 bike because it was my dad's original bike um and it had a 670 motor in it at the time and and he died like me and his best friend uh we cut this thing apart and uh all that's left of it is the the original purple of the original bike but we still kept its name the 670 bike and then uh and we got moose knuckle back here the infamous moose knuckle uh, four mm. cylinder 1600 cc's first bike to run a two second path you know ever back in 2020 so uh yeah that was uh that was quite the accomplishment man like that was like the barrier that um that we wanted to break that was like steph's uh, you know if you asked her like what was her you know her, her accomplishment and her best accomplishment it would definitely be you know that two second pass so definitely definitely our pride and joy of the fleet right here man as i gotta say as somebody who has seen i've got to watch that bike run uh, many times by now it's been a few years since it's been out and i'll tell you what uh seeing that bike run in person at shelton's where you're level with the track i mean that thing when it's going through the top side it looks like it's going 200 miles an hour i mean it really uh <laughs> they're they're that that four cylinder when that thing really gets pumping out the that it's it's something to see that's for sure you said it was 1600 cc yep 1600 cc um it's uh basically a billet bottom end and it's got four skidoo stock cylinders on it so i guess technically it is a stock cylinder motor but but uh but yeah it, it, i guess it hits pretty hard billy what's the size of a stock four cylinder volkswagen <laughs> that's true true um oh. you know and, and and it's funny like you know that pass that she ran a 296 um it was the last race of the year we were down at shelton's and uh, she uh we never could get the bike to go down the track on spray like we would spray it and it would just unset uh, un passy and uh you know we so we ran a 296 on it and i told her i said right before that pass i said hey if the bike goes out and it's going straight and it's nice and planted you know hit the scramble button and get on the nitrous um and it should pull through and uh you know she like the bike left laid down perfect like 60 to 116 on motor and uh she uh she got into the nitrous and it pulled through and i'll never forget uh jamie allen when she said like 296 on the pa it was like the best feeling the best you know like best feeling ever um but when we pulled the data on the bike because we data logged that bike um she didn't get into the the night till like 1.9 seconds so she uh she had a 296 and didn't actually get into the nitrous for almost you know two seconds of the run so uh, yeah i mean we always said like Hey, like when we get this thing back out and we want to spray it, uh, you know, we're, we're figured out and it, it'll run, it'll go faster than that. So, uh, I don't know, you know, I, after everything that happened with the accident and stuff, you know, um, I'd never ridden the bike before, um, ever. Steph was always saying like, Hey Paul, like ride this bike, ride this bike, ride this bike. And I, you know, I never would. And it wasn't because I was scared of it. I just, you know, there was no point in me riding it. You know, she was a better rider than I was anyway. So, you know, you know, I said, you ride it and I can listen and tune it and, and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, after her accident and stuff, we were down at Shelton's this year and, you know, I told James, you know, you know, I, I told him, I said, Hey, like, um, I, I'm not done yet. You know, I, I haven't done what I wanted to do yet. Um, so I told him, I said, Hey, I, I want to be the first one down the track. Um, so at that race, I was the first one down the track in the lane she was in, um, you know, that, that, you know, that was the first time I'd ever rode the bike and it was, uh, man, it was tough. Like I got down to the end of the track, man. And it was like all I could do, um, you know, to, uh, to hold it together. And, uh, you know, something a lot of people don't know about that either. It's like, that was the lane that, um, on the five year anniversary of my dad's death, he wanted, um, he wanted his ashes spread on track. So Steph and I and Peyton, our daughter drove down there and we put his ashes in that lane, you know, that, that we were in that night. Um, and the, and you know, made that pass, um, and, you know, in memory and honor of her. Um, so, you know, with that being said, you know, I think, um, you know, I think we're going to see a little bit more of this bike this coming year, man, you know, I'm in, in her honor, you know, I'm done chasing the records as far as like, uh, you know, putting, but putting on a bike, like I just can't anymore, you know, I just can't, I can't, I can't go through and, and, and do that anymore. Um, so, you know, um, I, I had a I had a PSDA record back in 2014. I broke on the trail bike. I won a 324 um, on the trail bike back in 2014. So I think uh, this year we're uh, going to get Moose Knuckle back out, uh, Dewey and I, and we're going to 
we're gonna we're gonna kick it old school. We're gonna tear some shit up. So uh, you know, I went uh that weekend down at um, down Sheldon's. I went to three twenty eight on motor on moose knuckle. So oh. you know, so that's um setup that you know uh, was set up for Steph and 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 stuff. So I think there's a little bit more of it on motor, but but I'm not that guy. I'm gonna whack the shit out of it and and <laughs> to the ground because that's just who I am. So you might uh, you be a fat boy this summer uh, chasing the twos. <laughs> So. <laughs> hey, it still is uh, one of only two uh, two strokes out there that have been in the twos as well. So, that's, absolutely, and the first one to do it as well. That's, that's right. Really yeah, no, the two strokes are the only four wheelers to do it, which I think is impressive. Being a two stroke yes. guy, yeah, yeah. that is really impressive. After you bring that up, I didn't think about it like that. That's really yep. cool. Yeah, and you know, K and T did it on motor, um, which is incredible. Um, we chased it on motor. We went a three hundred two on motor, uh, you know, but we we never could break that two second barrier on motor, uh, you know. But uh, it, at the time, we were the first two stroke, the first four wheeler, and the first nitrous assisted thing. Everything else had a uh, turbo on it, you know. At that point, um, so you know, that's that's that feat because, uh, like I said, you know, it, it's hard to compete with these four strokes with a turbo and all this, you know, data and technology that they have. You know, you know, we're we're trying to read spark plugs and tune tune carburetors. So, uh, you know, we 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 kick it old school. We low budget over here. We we low budget. So, going back to your uh, two ninety eight pass, or your excuse me, your two ninety six pass, and trying to get it on motor, and then you had to do a little bit of nitrous assistance. Do you think being down in Gilbert and the way the track prep is now, that would have been a little different with that all motor setup. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, Gilbert, you know, the big thing there is the air is so good um, at that time of the year. Uh, Jeff uh, and his track prep is, 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 you know, so I think with that combination, um, you know, we, we could have, um, you know, and, and we went back to ch chasing it on motor um, and, and for a year or so we broke a couple of jack shafts. Uh, broke one up in Michigan and then broke the crank a couple of times. You know, when this thing breaks, it's, it breaks hard, uh, you know, especially if you break a jack shaft, uh, you know, a big four cylinder like this, seeing 10 or 12,000 RPMs is really hard on it. Um, so, you know, we broke a jack shaft, got the jack shaft fixed, didn't realize that we spun the crank at the same time. So we, you know, we, we had an Achilles heel, you know, we were running pretty consistent three O's with it on motor, you know, last year. But, uh, you know, I, I thought our goal was always to get back to Gilbert and, and we ran out of time. So, you know, so we'll uh, see this year because, like I said, you know, our goal is to get back down to Gilbert this this fall. Sorry about that. We had to, we had some issues with K-Dub not joining, so we had to start a new meeting. And now we're back. So uh, I don't know what we were talking about, but a uh, conversation we were just having was something about uh, what was going on in Dome. Uh, Caleb said something about the single-seater. Tell him, Caleb. The yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're we're kind of transitioning into talking a little bit about what's going on Dome. Um, obviously a little bit of a preview on that, but um, we just uh got word that the K and T camp um with their single seat UTV, we're gonna use a little bit of air quotes with that. Um, <laughs> for the time being, just ran a, a three thirty at one hundred three miles an hour on their second pass with that machine. So that's a whole brand new build for them. Three thirty. 330. 3.30. Oh my god. I I just was told 33. I didn't get the third number, but anything in the 330s is, is the record like 37 from the guy in the Middle East, right? 39, something like that. 376. Oh, okay, whatever. So I don't know if they got the record back yet, but I will tell you that by the end of the weekend, we are probably going to see the double A UTV record back in the states between one of the cars that's out there because we also have the dnm car that ran the record with their oem motor not not a big uh swap or bill of anything that that was an oem um can-am motor that ran a 340 they've got a bar on that car now so they're trying to shoot from the moon as well yeah and there's also somebody else out there too you guys probably don't recognize the name but it's a big name and my world is uh, my buddy, my motor builder, Jeremy Hannon. Jeremy oh, Hannon man. is the world's fastest on a snowmobile. He does all my motors for me, but he went a like 425 in the eighth mile at like 165 on a snowmobile last fall. Um, so he's playing it. Yeah, he's playing in that arena too. So, you know, I, th I think there's, there's some, 
there's some slingers out there, man. I mean, I think Price, the thing that, I think Price has his car out there too, right? Jason Price has a car out there as well. I didn't know this until earlier tonight, but I guess there's a few really fast side by side cars out there. I've seen week. pictures posted by like Dirt and Dunes. I had no idea. I seen pictures posted by like Dirt and Dunes that there was a few like really fast side by sides out there. By the way, shout out Dirt and Dunes photography. Heck yeah, yeah. Thank you, Julie. Thank you guys for the the needs and the pictures. Like that's awesome. I've already sent her a message. Like that's really cool that they're doing that for us. But uh, you know, so the question is, single seaters. What 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 do you guys think? So single, I got no problem with single seaters. Um. My biggest concern is where the distinction on UTV type configuration the line gets drawn at. They've got some plastics. Is there a body rule? The front. Do we um, have a body they, rule? I don't. I was just about to. Well, you know, that's and it, that's kind of where the UTV type configuration goes into. Now we've been, you know, pretty loose with that. Obviously, you go to the the Middle East; those guys they basically run a front clip, but they've also run, you know, a more traditional, you know roll cage on those um sometimes they've got some additional bracing on on the interior of it uh but now we've got kt they've got a full narrower single seat machine um a little bit more of a dragster style cage on it uh and you know it is still fully suspended it's uh i believe that's still their uh, z1 motor out of their their build so you know it still is power sports um it's still running off of you know uh a power sports like transmission it's not anything like a you know power glide or anything bolted to the back um like i said still suspended so it's it's kind of like it checks a lot of the boxes there but where do we draw the line between a utv and a mini buggy my god so, you are gonna make so many side-by-side guys just right uh, you know well just i what, we're not, not saying anything definite said. here not saying anything definite here but you know like i think there needs to be some some dis- about that and uh definitely i i literally i wish definitely. that uh we had seen a little bit more of this kind of in the woodworks being built so we could have discussed it a little bit more oh i mean but i'm not mad know. about it it's cool i like seeing when it's okay. done versus the process so hear me out hear me out but when we go to the racetrack all of it aside how is that car different than mike goodell's so suspension. difference on that's uh, the for sure suspension. Um, so Mike Goodell's. Mike Goodell's did they run a bar? Kind of, are they running a bar? They are running a bar. Oh yes. shit! So they would. That's well, that's that only help. that, that doesn't just help anything. for double A um, UTV. That's the only one that, that the bar records for. Um, Mike Goodell's though, Rick. That that's you know, it, that's soft chassis. So I'm just saying that, in the that general, really would be more of a drag in the general. I mean that's a okay. Listen. I love those guys, and I don't have any problem with the car because I think it's really cool. I've never seen a titanium roll cage. Is that titanium roll cage? I'm guessing. <laughs> no, it, it looks sick though. It looks I mean, titanium. That's no motorsport has titanium roll cage. That, that's gonna be the first time. I mean, that's there's no. Uh, I think it's really cool, but that's a rear engine altered to me. <laughs> I mean, what? I, I, I mean, mean, I don't know, man. I mean. If they, hey, L sevens are knobbies. That's what. Yeah, that's that, will disagree to that right now. Great lengths on that, Ricky. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. I love those guys. I think that thing is awesome. It's super fast, but in the grand scheme of things, side by side means you can have someone sit beside you. Am I wrong on that, or am I just an idiot? I don't know. Did what the, is the term side by side well, stand? What is that? Did the guy from Dubai have two seats? No, he has like almost the same thing. I'm th- his chassis being different. He has like almost long. the same thing. Maybe not. Than- maybe not an alt like an altered dragster style cage, but he has. He's it's right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So that one is a stretched. It started out as a Polaris um, Razor 900 four seater. They did stretch it um, like eight inches, I think. So it's um, left hand seating. Trying. I'm trying to remember if it was if it was left hand drive or if it was center drive on that one. I want to say it was left hand drive, but they do not have the other seat in it. If that is the case, I'm gonna try to pull it up right here while we're discussing it. Um, so yeah, it's, just getting rid of the extra space is not a bad idea either. What was that, Paul? Like, what, was that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. what was that, Paul? And you could argue too that you know if it based off of a Polaris RS1, which is a factory single seat, you know, kind of 
side by side UTV. I mean, I could argue that that it's a you know that it's based off of an RS1, but you know, so is a Honda Pilot. You know, it's a single seat. You know, I mean, so uh, you know, I mean, if you started with a Honda Odyssey chassis or a Honda Pilot, I was about chassis, to say it's a modern day Odyssey. <laughs> you know, it's I mean, a, it's a new yeah, age I mean, Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you if you if you cut you know if you cut eighteen inches and left the seat in a Honda Odyssey and extended it with titanium. I mean, is it still an Odyssey? I I, I don't know, man. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I, like, and um, that's definitely why we've left in like our records for some of the lower tier records on the UTV side, making sure that you, you just have to have a stock chassis in there. Right. You know, cause, cause you're right. Like at, at what point when you go full custom, like how much of that is, you know, really, uh, you know, a side by side and, and, not to discount your point, Rick, but I agree with Paul. Like, you know, there are single seat UTVs out there. So, like, I don't worry too much about that. But, you know, body must resemble an OEM UTV, TV type configuration. Like, again, is it, just is be it how, in the how center? Strict is the page in the center of that one or is it off to the left? I haven't seen it from straight forward. Is it off? I believe, it, I believe it's centered. I believe it's centered. Very, very. In a, here's the way I look at it. Back in the day when the Banshees started, right, it was stock frame, stock frame, stock frame. Over time, then they stretched the front, then they did fancier front ends, then they did ridge. I mean, it's no different than the evolution of, I mean, none of us right. have Banshees, you know? <laughs> right. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, even even factory, I mean, a, a full plastic is the most looking it most like a yamaha banshee but it couldn't be the first i mean it, the full plastics have carbon fiber plastics so it's not full carbon fiber plastic class <laughs> it's full you know but anyway it's just the nature of the i guess that's just when it comes down to the records though i guess after the season's over you have to you, do you you have to wait to the end of the season to make that change right or how do you do that yeah i i think those kind of changes have to be end of season because it leave it to k and t to get man. leave it to k and t to get that started in february where you can't you, you know come on leave it to yeah. those guys to dang we need to review a couple things 10 months from now right and you, you're talking off air like uh before Rick, going to ricky like you know as far as national sand drag records I, I could wash my hands of the side by side stuff. I tried to work with, uh, you know, work with side by side, you know, camps. And, you know, what I found is there's an East Coast camp, there's a West Coast camp. Um, and you can't make either one of them happy and they can't agree on anything. So, you know, as far as the car goes for me, like buggy, side by side, whatever we want to call it, like I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. Like you said, it's the evolution. I mean, if that's where it's going to go, we just need to, we just, you know, I think you just need to say like, Hey, like, yeah, man, that's cool. Like everybody can do it, you know? Um, and, and open it up, you know, if that's the direction it's going to go. hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's that's, that's a class that I just about. stand at the fence and watch. I'll just stand yeah. at the fence and watch that grow over time. I have no business anywhere near that. I got to rev one up at KT shop. I honestly think it was the one that has that cage on it now. It looks like they just cut the black car apart and put the I don't know. I don't I honestly, like Paul said it best, you can't make it it's, it seems a lot like the four stroke world where there's like a east coast and a west coast. Uh it's it's that to you, Caleb. You're gonna have to navigate through that for the records. It's going to be a fun, fun time. Well, let's kick it over to our interview with Esteban Juarez real quick. And then we will, well, actually, no. Let's, uh, never mind, because we didn't even talk, talk about some more dome stuff. Let's yeah, I'm sorry. I, I know that it, it felt so got a, a Novar bike I saw just run like a, a 320-something. Your, um, your, mic, your mic sounds crazy. I, I don't tell you, dude. Does he sound fuzzy to y'all? Yeah, wild. Yeah, he's he sounds like he's tripping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it's just, the just unplug yeah. it. I, I I can't. It's wireless. <laughs> get it away from your mouth, then. Caleb, I will correct you before you get started, since you have a crazy microphone. I heard through the grapevine that uh, Caesar just went like a seventeen or an eighteen on K and T's triple no bar. Heck yeah. hit. The one Does this sound better? No, like, it doesn't. Okay, it I'm better. just gonna ditch it. Okay. Ricky, 
Isn't a 17 or an 18 on a no bar bike just absolutely insane to you? So, uh, hold on, no was bar... that one bike that uh, Caesar and then built in Puerto Rico that has no, the K&T? no, no, this is KT. KT has their own no bar bike, right? Okay, so it was KT's own. They have okay. a triple DM, it's they have two triples the triple that went to 298 that's in a turbo chassis. But then they have a full titanium hill bike that's fully suspended, no bar, titanium Lone Star setup. Got and plus um, security at the back. It's a plus absolutely in the realm. Mine's a 24, so I can guarantee you 30 isn't out of the ballpark. And they they went like a 321 or something. Caesar went on, you know, Caesar is the guy for no bar. You know, Jaden's an, a really, really rider, but... When you see K and T bring Caesar in to ride their no bar, ride their seven seventy five, I, I spoke with Caesar not long ago. Not to branch off too far, but to, since we're on the topic of no bar, in my opinion, Caesar uh, Cordero is the best no bar rider in the country. Just because in Puerto Rico they have him test bikes before any other rider gets on them. Oh. Um, he just tests. He tests all the bikes. <laughs> he, 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 I, that's not a joke. He, he and the jeeps. He drives everything. Yes. Over there. Yes. He. They're the the Puerto Rican people. They're just for our sport. And uh, but yes, I heard he went uh, like a uh, in the teens somewhere. Not quite broke the record, but I think uh, like an eighteen or something. Um. So that's pretty impressive. And like Paul was saying, uh, to go teens without a wheelie bar, I don't care what anyone says but to go faster than 350s without a wheelie bar is just blows my mind yeah i i can't wrap my head around it what tire was he on ricky do you know an american racer or like a hoosier or something like a a square incredible it's it's great it's, it's, it's i mean it's one thing to, to to sell seven or whatever but if you're uh putting the hammer down on a on an american racer or a hoosier carcass tire your you ball's bigger than I got because I would I launch one without without a wheelie really bar on. So ha- hands, you know, hands off to that dude, man. That's that's so, crazy. Ricky said something about not going, you know, having not have a wheelie really bar and going faster than three fifties is insane. So like, yeah. what is it? What is it that keeps the front end down on those? We know it's like really long out the back end, but what else is the kind of tips and tricks that you may know of that kind of keeps those machines from not just kind of flipping over backwards while they're going down the track without a wheelie bar? Man, I don't know. I've never messed with anything as far as no bar stuff goes. You know, I would say it's, it's clutch setup and power management, man. I mean, these guys have just figured out like, you know, they, they they can't dead hook a tire. Um, They're not, you know, they're not trying to hook a tire really hard. Like, like, you know, like you could a a bar bike, I don't think, Uh, you know, so they're, in my opinion, applying enough power to the tire to get it to spin. And if, if you ever slow the tire down, I think that's when you see the bikes, you know, um, start to stand up. Um, mm-hmm. so, you know, in my opinion, that's, that's key is just trying to get, get the tire, get, you know, hit the tire hard enough to keep it spinning. But, you know, even at that, I mean, these things are 60 and like, you know, like, like then most wheelie bar bikes do of the same CC, you know? So, you know, the question is, is like, you know, have have been handicapping the bikes for years running a wheelie bar. You know, right. um, no and and you know, in my mind, it's hard to wrap. You know, like, you know, how fast and and when will it stop? You know, um, you know, we were, you know, three or four years ago, bikes of the same CC with wheelie bars weren't even running these numbers, and they're running it, you know, on a L7 or a Cheetah or whatever you want to call it um right. tire now and in in no wheelie bar so it's 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 just it's crazy to me and if ricky's still on here he could probably add a little bit to that yeah too, so. uh, ricky my same que- question to you i you said uh it's kind of crazy going faster than 350s without a wheelie bar and i asked paul um what what kind of tips and tricks besides being really long out the back end kind of helps with keeping the front end on the ground not you know wheeling on a no bar bike when you're going that fast in the 330s 20s and three teens now So (laughs) this probably sounds ridiculous, uh, but I definitely don't have any tips or tricks because I've never done, I've never had a no bar bike and I'm currently building one uh, just because of how hot the class has gotten, how interesting it is that bikes are going that fast on 
this little tire or now they're starting to put paddles on them as well uh but uh you know we're running that l7 tire we're going to try that as well my goal is just to go 40s or 30s let alone uh you know some of these bikes going teens and stuff that's incredible but somehow uh, i used to think it was get a bunch of wheel speed so the front end stays down and then just worry about the back half well like paul mentioned uh, i went out to um i went out to you know obviously louisiana these last couple of years and seen a couple of these full plastics that they have really dialed in and a couple of these uh outlaw knobby bikes that they have really dialed in with these l7s without a wheelie bar and I honestly, I had there, you know, obviously the guys are really good. I see that the guys that are going fast are like the Kelvin from Team Venom. That guy's a clutch guru, right? Uh, KT doesn't just have people messing with their bikes, okay? There's not, uh, Paul can vouch for that. He's raced with those guys for long enough. They have Kelvin over there working on their no bar bike, helping them out. That shows you how smart that guy is in the clutch because his numbers across the board from the mile per hour, the 60 foot is just better than most paddle bikes. And then I've gone and seen some of the L7, the little tire on wheelie bar bikes and really performed well even. Mm -hmm. And honestly, as silly as this might sound, Everything that we've just talked about, about why they're so fast and how it's incredible is the reason I'm building one for the class. Because to me, it's like the new small tire craze. Like it's the it's version of radial versus the world, right? Where they got the, the 275, whatever the radio class, mm -hmm. where it's basically. Yeah, um, it's, no, it's no bar versus the world at this point. Okay. Think about right. how popular and how. Everyone knows about Lights Out. That's about to happen, what, next weekend, I believe. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, I mean, it's radio okay. versus the world. And to me, it's uh, the, the no bar thing. There's always been some no bar bikes, but this this new, this few, and I, I honestly, there's a few key areas that help develop that in it. One, Patrick Hunt out in North Carolina. Him and his people, those North, that North, this is why the no bar, sorry to, I don't know if we meant to talk about no bar this much, but in my opinion, the reason it's so big and growing at a rapid pace is because it's the only class in our sport where three different types of bikes from three different, three, you can be anywhere in the country, outside the country, but three different styles of bikes. North Carolina style outlaw knobbies where they have the L7 tire, no wheelie bar. Um, and they're kind of like called outlaw knobbies down there. They're, they're, uh, you know, like that's what Patrick Hunt and Ryan Davis and those kind of guy, uh, Tony Miller's building a bunch of them. You're seeing these fully suspended on the cheetah tires. Those are outlaw knobbies. Then you have the West Coast style hill bikes with paddles, the Lone Stars, the Arlo Cullies, the K&T, the, the TJ Pates. Then you also have the full plastics from Puerto Rico, and that's there's a hundred of them. So three different. That's why there's forty entries, and there's there's going to be up to there's fifty entries in Louisiana this year for the no bar class, and it's one of the most competitive, impressive in biggest classes in the sport. And honestly, three, four years ago, I made fun of no bar bikes more than anybody on the internet. And I'm very thankful that most people forgot about that. I don't think it, I don't, people forgot about that. Yeah, I think, we'll some, see still about that. I we'll think see some still very much remember that. I, I will say I this hope. too, like, you know, I definitely kind of heard the similar things that you guys were talking about, that it's all been tire speed. It's all been slip in the clutch. And a lot of it with those Cheetah L7 knobby, tires um that's been a big catalyst with it but like you know i think just the end of last year started seeing a lot of those guys that were running the the l7s and and starting to see these crazy times with it with that that black venom and everything um they experimented with some big tires like we were talking about and what we're now seeing running and i think that's going to be very interesting to see where some of these bikes go with that and how they're going to manage the power because that's a lot more tire than they're typically used to running. Paul, you going to put an L7 on on one of your on the trail bike maybe? 
Hey, if I'm gonna hey, if I'm gonna tear something up, I might as well just tear Moose Knuckle up. You might see Moose Knuckle with a set of L sevens on there. So I actually, I, you know, I think I think my, might actually be. I was about to say, you just carve, <laughs> you just be like an edger, just carve the carve it up. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how big this this thing here is, but it's, it's yeah, I would You're say. Be, it's I know, be, where uh, are they getting the these ground. chains from? Freaking with these plus twenty six, plus thirty swing arms. Yeah, just you just at that point you just order a roll okay. and just say I want all of it, you know, just just give me all of it, you know, um, you know, and it's interesting. Like Ricky said, I mean, so many different bikes um, in the no bar thing, and I know there was some grumbling last year's like, oh, your bike's not a no bar bike because it's you could never turn on a hill, and you're you know, and 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 it's just man, it seems like a lot of that has settled down. Um, and, and like Ricky said, there's there's like kind of three different styles and pat I, you know pat um pat hunts i think is all rigid is that is that not his steel bike got a rigid rear at least on that color. okay gotcha the blue, you know the blue so bike it's... he has is full rigid yep but right. now he's building now he's full suspended because you have to run full suspended for psda so okay, so got that's it. another that's another thing with the psda you have to run suspension so like in a lot of the shootouts that you might see that you can run like rigid bikes, like what Pat has. But like when you go to the PSDA, no bar has to have suspension. So, but yeah, yeah, I mean, listen, I know what you're about to say. I don't give a crap. If it doesn't have a wheelie bar and that baby's going almost a hundred miles an hour. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. Hey, sure. we, we are actually being joined right now by Mr. Kyle Weedmeyer. Kyle, how's it going out there at Dome? He's actually out there at Dome Valley right now. Yeah, it's going pretty good. I just walked over, walked over to Julie Moore's pits, grabbed some dinner, uh, pushed the bikes around. Everything's going pretty good. Any uh, any crazy numbers? I we were just talking about K and T running with the side by side and stuff like that. We were talking about the no bar bikes and stuff like that. What, anything else to talk about from Dome? Uh, we got a three thirteen out of uh, we got a three thirteen out of uh, out of four. Is that? I'm not good at this. Ricky's uh, Ricky always knows all people. And then I'm always terrible with names. Uh, hold on, let me check with my inside. Get, get me enough information to work with, K Dub. What <laughs> color was it? Oh, K and T triple, the big boy. That's right. Okay, that's so what K and T three thirteen. And then uh, Tyler Hart, his bike ran a T in a three sixteen. I want to say. So yeah, everything's going pretty good. Uh, who else? What else, Ryan? Uh, some of these side by sides are pretty crazy. Uh, Brody and the D and M side by side pretty much shot it straight in the air, which is awesome. Forgot he had a wheelie bar and lifted. And then uh, what wow. else happened? Oh, I don't did he break the wheelie bar? <laughs> no, it didn't break the wheelie bar. The wheelie bar was just like Brian McWenzie, just straight up in the air. And oh, nice. Forgot it was there, and it lifted. He's like, "Oh crap!" Oh, but uh, I don't know. I'm having a good time out here, like you... always, uh, roaming around pit to pit. But yeah, everything's going pretty good. Eating. So you already made a pit stop at Julie Moore's camp for the food, which is always a good move. She had ribs. They were awesome. Then the whole time, so I grabbed the ribs, and then next thing I know, Jeff needed to go. So I had to run over there, get try to eat ribs while I try to take the quad over there. But I got it done. Don't worry. You didn't plan on having to work and do interviews this week, did you? <laughs> no, I don't think I did. Wait, anybody got any for K Dub about what's going on at Dome? I do. Uh, see if we can rotate the video I'm sending out. Hey, what's the taco situation out there this year? Is it good still? Oh God. So we Let's... don't have. Those we have tacos a hot are so dog good. stand, but not a top stand right now. A hot dog so, stand at Dome Valley. Don't, don't you worry, guys. A taco, a taco guy will be here for sure. Man, those oh, are... how did you allow this? <laughs> oh man, those ta- Oh man. Hey, so K Dub. In all seriousness, you said uh, Tyler Hart went a, a three sixteen. That's that's the Nitro seventy five. That's getting pretty close. They hold the record at a three fourteen. So yeah, that's pretty good. It was. It was a, uh, I, I, uh, I'm told it was a backup, so it is pretty good. It's just typical day one of a PSEA race where everyone's fighting the track, and then everyone, everyone kind of through their own issues. But I think everything's coming around pretty good, and then some bikes are actually starting to run pretty good right now. How's yeah, Eric? Did... Yeah, how's Eric? Eric, Eric's doing pretty good. Uh, he just got on his, uh, he just got on his, uh, his four four fifty bike, and I want to say he caught a perfect light in, uh, in his time trial he just ran. And uh, I didn't see the number on it because he was running on Missy, but uh, looks like he's doing pretty good after after what happened earlier. What so that's uh, can you kind of describe what happened earlier with Eric? Basically, what happened was he uh, he ran a three three zero at ninety five mile an hour on his four cylinder laydown, right? And uh, and then what uh, from what I understand was one of the electrons 
the needle kind of stuck a little bit going back down. We let off, and then the bike kind of rode out towards the uh, towards. He pretty much had the road in. He uh, the bike kind of ran out towards the end. He was able to slow it down enough, but he couldn't get the bike shut down. And then it kind of ran off into this like kind of brushy area. And what was amazing was the bike's perfectly fine, and he he walked away perfectly fine, minus like a burn on his calf. So it was kind of kind of amazing, honestly. Uh, really lucky. And then uh, yeah, so. This is so, a direct yeah, quote. This is a direct quote where he said he was busy looking for a soft spot instead of pulling his tether. So only Eric will uh, give you that direct quote. So. <laughs> I, yeah, I wouldn't make fun of him too much. Doing 95 mile an hour, having your tether on your brake hand. It just you gotta go and stick with what you're gonna do if shit goes wrong. You might have a plan. Your mic kind of cut out there. Oh, can you hear me? Now? I love your Ted. Yeah. I love your Ted Laronis reference. Like everyone here will understand that. Besides me, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I've heard enough. Yeah, I ran kinda off, get it. ran off the track, pulled a Ted Laronis day boarding up. Well, yeah, everything's yeah. good. That's cool. Awesome. Hey, hey, Kyle, has uh, have they got their uh, their nitrous bike track yet? Uh, Eric and them yet? Uh, they're just on motor today, and uh, I think they're having problems. Uh, it sounds like a transmission issue. Uh, they just tried to run it a little bit ago. Uh, so. Nick's actually looking at it right now, so hopefully they can kind of figure it out. But it's just having a bunch of shifting issues, so so just kind of stay tuned on that. Yeah, I think nitrous will fix that shifting issue. That'll drive right <laughs> through it, eh, Paul? It, just skip, just skip gear. It won't go into it. Just skip it. Just 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 have them be just a message. I'll tell them what jets to put in it. <laughs> All right, I'll let Missy know then. Like, just go past that gear as fast as you can. Maybe clutch it if you need to. It's getting high gear. Yeah, we'll just get her in high gear and just hit it real hard. Oh yeah, high gear, two kits. You can't. I mean, it's gonna go or do something. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it, it's all right. You know, it's only it's only Tuesday, right? Yeah, it's only Tuesday. I mean, you could always next day some stuff in and have the bike ready to go by Thursday. Yeah, I, I, there's no there's no waiting till Thursday to tear it up. You might as well tear it up now. Oh, yeah, you might as well. You might as well just put it in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Hey, K Dub, uh, is it incredibly windy out there again this time? No, it's not too windy. It's actually perfect. I mean, I mean, about 70 degrees sunshine, and then right now it's trying to drop down uh, 55, 60. I mean, you couldn't ask for better weather. Yeah, good deal. So, what's the uh, yeah. what's the word? What's the word street with? Uh, we were talking about it earlier with the K and T single seat side by side thing. What what what's what's the other think of it? I haven't really interviewed the other camp. I see. I saw some some of my uh, my friends' uh, text group who said they didn't like it, but I love that thing. If, Dude, uh, yeah. I think it looks awesome Damian to look just at. Put, and then Damian if you think just... about it, like if you think about it, like a triple banshee. What what does a triple banshee like uh, have anything to do with a banshee? I mean, they're just doing the same thing with side by side, really. But right. I'm sure the other camp isn't liking it too much. I think it just looks cool to look at, and I'll let everyone argue and figure out what they want. Damien just put the video of it in the group chat, I, I, and this I, I thing is freaking thing. moving. Yeah. Damien mm -hmm. just put the video of this thing in the group chat, and it is freaking moving. Oh yeah, and and if you guys that that video too. That was a straight shot. The comment on there, it looks like it's on a Sunday drive. There is a lot left in that car. That yeah, I mean it'll is so soft. Yeah, it'll run. It'll run by the end of the weekend if they hit it hard. You know, I mean that's like like you 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 to, you know probably Tony Miller power ish you know with his Z one, mm -hmm. um, and weight wise, I'm probably sure it's not too far off. You know. Um, you know, from, from what Tony's lay down runs. So I, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think three O's are out of the question. What do you think, Kyle? I guess you got to see it run. I've honestly been too busy kind of work helping Jeff and everything, but just, uh, just look at it and see what these guys are on. Uh, I bet it could do three, one, three O. Uh, all I'm telling you is I think it looks awesome. I mean, when I first saw it, I thought, I was like, where's the body for this thing? Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it's really cool. it looks like, like a funny car without the body on it or something. Essentially. Yeah. I was, I was thinking like, did they, did I, I assumed there was a body in the trailer they were just going to put on it. And then I realized, <laughs> no, there wasn't. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Still looks badass. I mean, and oh, it looks really it's, fast. It's, it's cool. It's definitely cool. Yeah. Are you gonna oh, yeah, do that to your? Are you gonna do that to your razor now, Kato? <laughs> no, and I've got to get all the plastic off of it and see if I can get someone to build a chassis for it. And yeah, get that thing that from running dang. five fours to like a four nine, maybe. Oh, you're not gonna do any other upgrades. You just do the cage. That's it. <laughs> Hell no! You know how expensive those things are. I don't get that. I remember money. when you. I, I remember when you took your passenger seat out to remove weight. So hey. Oh, you got it. I want to run five three. You don't know the pure power <laughs> and the pure, yeah. like the fear you have when you dump the clutch in that thing. I mean, I don't have, I have a CVD, but when I slam the pedal 
And then I start going, and I'm chugging along to a 54, 55 mile hour. You do not know that feeling. And then just chopping the throttle, beating Brian in the bracket race. You can't beat it. Hey, <laughs> hey, K Dub, have you ever thought about building one that and and that you the passenger you, you know, just you could give rides like a, you know, like charge a small fee, you know. You know, I should do that. What is it, uh, the Larry Dixon? They're like Larry Dixon's yeah. call. Yeah. Yeah. Larry Dixon or Dennis, Ander- <laughs> Dennis Anderson's King Sling. Dennis Anderson's yeah. King Sling monster truck. He had, he does that thing. I, I could just, I could just see Rick, Ricky with his legs wrapped around you. <laughs> hey, I'll go for a ride. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is awesome. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. hey. The side by sides. I think uh, how many side by sides are there, Kate? Up five or so. I want to say five or six. Uh. Five or how six. Many? Uh, DNM has a couple. K and T has their two right here, and then uh, and then uh, I think right over here. He's been kind of walking over here, but uh, yeah, there's definitely a few of them. Uh, every time I kind of look at the track, I see one that's bombing down the track, going way faster than what my race ever would run. How many no bikes are there? No bikes. Uh, how many have I mean, you this seen? This could be a pure guess. I'll be honest. I'm a terrible correspondent. Uh, like I'm nothing like Ricky. Ricky will know all details for everything. Like I'm just always looking for where Julie is, where's the food, and then Taco saying what the Taco saying situation is, and then I'm working for Jeff full time right now too. So I don't really have a whole lot of good intel other than what our group's doing. Hey, nothing. You know that's a live correspondent. If hey, I think you're doing a fantastic job, Kate. Up day one. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's day one. So thank you. Oh, yeah. Great job. Great job. Bugging people and figure out what they're doing, and then when I try to go live, eventually, I hope I'll get a better lay of the land. Is but, the track we, live? But uh, it, we were talking earlier. That, maybe you could, uh, maybe you could work work your mat on these no bar bikes. Maybe look over their shoulder with their clutch tune up and uh, give Ricky some pointers oh, yeah. here. Yeah. You know, oh, maybe yeah. I should <laughs> see what kind I of mean, trees are in there. Yeah, just 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 play like a nobody, you know, and and just like like oh hey, we got going on here, and then you're, you know, you're just, just a side by side guy. Yeah, yeah, you're oh, just yeah, a side by side guy. guy. Yeah. Turbo guy, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and then just feed Ricky some intel, you know. Oh, yeah. Give me some... I'm trying to get as much. I'm trying to get as much intel as I possibly can. Just kind of hovering <laughs> around everybody. I'm trying to learn four cylinder intel from Jeff. I'm learning intel from Nick for whatever. I try to get back in the Banshee game. Uh, so I'll I'll keep uh, I'll keep taking notes for you guys. Well, we surely appreciate your correspondence, no matter. Oh uh, yeah, you guys are welcome. how far. No matter how you get away from your pit. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks of him, me, him, and me, K Dub, and Cody doing the uh doing the lot on the return road down there in Dome Valley. <laughs> oh, that was uh, a blast. 2021. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were, were doing co- shit to people yeah. commentary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was some good times. Well, hey, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna we're gonna to uh kick it over to the interview with Esteban Juarez real quick. Before we kick it over to Esteban Juarez, we're gonna give a shout out to Lone Star Graphics, who's actually at Dome Valley right now, taking pictures, putting your picture on T-shirts, photo plaques, photo prints, mouse pads, custom award plaques, license plates, ceramic coffee mugs, canvas pot holders, and a canvas bag. And they even got a little bit of canvas pillows. And you can buy poster boards as well. They do really, they do really great service for sport. They've been in it for a long time, and keep supporting them because word is they might be thinking about retirement here soon. So uh, let's keep supporting Lone Star Graphics as they support us. So go check out Lone Star Graphics Gallery and their products on LoneStarGraphics.info. That is LoneStarGraphics.info. Shout out to Lone Star Graphics Custom Photo Graphics and Design. And we are going to cut it over to our interview with Esteban Juarez, track promoter of Don Valley Raceway. Welcome back to Pedal Talk. We have a very special guest once again. It is Esteban Juarez, head promoter at Don Valley Raceway and uh yuma arizona and we'll just get right into it here uh can i have you introduce yourself to everybody uh esteban yeah excuse me yeah of course so my name is esteban juarez um some youngest son of ernesto juarez owner of dome valley raceway i'm the head promoter i've been moved into a lot of uh pretty important positions here at the racetrack when it comes to just hosting the events and situating everything to have some successful events. And uh, the older I got, I was able just to transition into a pretty important role with the racetrack and my family. And um, it's just going to continue to grow from there. Uh, We uh, got a point series going on at our racetrack uh, this last year that we started up that we've never had before. So that's just one uh, small integration that we're doing to our track just trying to continue sand drags here at don't matter race but yeah the point series is really cool and it's new to the track 
That's really awesome. Uh, excited for that because you guys already had your first race. Uh, how was that? How did the first race go? So the first race was really well. We had some new faces come out, which always is a great, a t- a great time because, you know, it's just a new experience for these racers that have never been out with us. All of them came back to us with some good, positive feedback saying that they're only going to help and try to get more racers out. But, you know, in the past couple of years, the track hadn't had been as frequently open. So a lot of racers just haven't really committed to making a full time schedule out of coming to Dome. So that's why with this new series that we have coming up for 2024 and that we did have in January, it's just to kind of, you know, show them, hey, there's a long term here with Dome Valley Raceway. In January, you know, um, I expected it to be a good event, but I knew, you know, it is closer towards the holidays. A lot of people and a lot of families I know are getting together, traveling, going across the country to see family members that they typically don't. So I was expecting, you know, and I knew from the get-go, a lot of racers reached out to me that, hey, you know, we'll be there for March because March just works out so much better. We had a great turnout, great turnout spectators. As always, we had a full crowd on Saturday, which is always awesome. They loved just seeing those top alcohol cars go down. A lot of racers uh, that came out, enjoyed it. You know, there's a lot of kids that were able to get down the track and get some experience under their belt when it comes to driving, which is always cool to see because as a kid, you know, growing up on the racetrack, my dad's been running the racetrack since 1995, 1996, sorry. It's on a t-shirt. I don't even know at the top of my head, <laughs> uh, but it's before I was born. So I've been able to see everyone that's came into Don Valley Raceway that's promoted, that has worked and put their blood, sweat and tears into this place. And As I've gotten older, you know, I've only been able to integrate that into how I try to run things. And um, in the future, it should be looking a lot more ideal to what we're looking for. But it's definitely going in in the right direction. Well, I like the direction you guys are going. I've been on this podcast and I've said that uh, Dome Valley's the no other track is doing the most for the track than Dome Valley right now. And it show it really does. Uh, We are also joined by John Sorg at Michigan. And John Sorg actually has a question about your early involvement well what's the difference between uh your early involvement when your dad founded the track versus what you do now as head promoter um i'm sure time has changed explain a little of that so you know the first thought i can i can literally sit here and talk about the first time we ever had a top fuel dragster or even a top alcohol dragster come to our racetrack i remember the first time uh Jeff Jano actually made the trip to Dome Valley Raceway and inspected the shutdown, suggested, hey, you know, you've never had a top fuel car here. This is what we need. And at that time, I was six, seven years old. I was a kid. And I was at a very young age. I believe I was I was actually driving vehicles, full, full grown vehicles that people drive on a day to day basis at the age of five. So it was something that I've just always been involved with. To where, you know, once I got to the the point of 17, 18, where, hey, you got a head on yourself, let's start helping a little more at the time. I can always remember that the paddle tires would go flying off all the top fuel dragsters. And as that kid, I would go run into their pits and say, hey, can I have your paddle? Because I know you're not using them again. And, you know, that's <laughs> my enjoyment for it. So that's why. It's awesome because now that I'm running the show, I'm trying to promote and reach out to all these racers. They remember me as that six, five-year-old kid that was at the racetrack and joined it as a kid. And now I've adapted into this role that I'm trying to continue on from what it used to be and just build it into what it could be in this new economy and new times and just totally different atmosphere for anything. Great. Well, we've seen your style of promotion and the way it's kind of, you kind of taking more advantage of the modern tools with social media and uh, just posting more of the videos and more of the content of your track to try to get that viewership. And it really has looked like it's work. Uh, can you talk about your style of promotion and what you've seen on return in, on investment? And what do you think other traction from, or excuse me, what do you think other track promoters should try to focus on? to try to grow the sport just like you kind of have at Dome. Yeah, and um, I would most definitely say I'm still in a position to where I I love my number one saying I love to say is I only know what I know. So if there's something that I don't know, I'd love to know it because it's only more beneficial to me in long term. And the times are totally different. Everyone 
and I know not everyone, you know, there's certain generations that aren't on social media, but for the majority of individuals nowadays that are traveling, wanting to go to events are on social media and videos, reels, they're more engaging. And you can look at all these platforms to where they all at some point didn't have, they were all different in their own ways. But the thing is, is now every single platform has video content that you can do. They allow you to post pictures. They allow you to add links to websites before they didn't. And you can see how even they're integrating to a way that big companies, like you can look at what I've personally have seen a great investment in is going to NASCAR, IndyCar, NHRA races, huge events. Because these events have that big name already to where you don't, they really wouldn't have to go out and do too much promoting. Why? Because there's already a mass group of individuals that know of them and are loyal and will stick to them. I went to IndyCar last April and I was in a crowd of 130,000 people, spectators. And I was just the whole time, I'm just looking around, looking at how they maintain that. What are they doing? And everything that you're there, it's an event not just a racing event, it's an experience. You got music playing in the background at every area that the spectators are. You have food vendors, you have people performing, you have different uh, cars or different classes going through so that they're able to experience it in every single aspect. And one thing I've looked at, okay, you know, these people, these companies, these organizations already have their big followers. I want to make sure that I can try to generate something like this and bring it to our organization, our racetrack. And one thing I really invested in was a very good video camera, a pretty good video camera that I was able to use at our couple of events that I've had it for. I've only had it for two events. My first video, First video that I posted on Facebook, as of right now, I just looked at it before we got on, it's at 650,000 impressions. So that means 650,000 people saw the video for an extended period of time. They didn't maybe watch the entire video, but they saw it. And they saw, oh, wow, these are some big tire sand dragsters that you may see on the NHRA, but on dirt. And it's awesome because once you get that many views, you get so many comments, negative or positive. At the end of the day, their comments are comments. It's always gonna come in. And um, it's awesome just to see that that many individuals are interacting with it. And it's just one simple video and it can translate into just so much more. And that's how social media has really just taken over. And I'm just trying to take advantage of that. I understand it. I remember when social media platforms first came out, I was able to use the MySpace when it was first there in transition into Facebook and then Twitter came out. Now it's X, you know, there's just so many different platforms and Twitter, I would say X is another platform. I mean, I personally haven't even made a profile on yet. And I really want to, because that's just another, another avenue of individuals that you can tap that aren't getting tapped. There's actually, I would say a lot of individuals that don't know of Sandrax, you know, they may know of, you got circuit racing, you have NHRA, but when it comes to sand drags, it's kind of like, hey, you guys are crazy. You guys are out doing three seconds on the dirt. That's insane. And um, I feel like that should be more promoted and more ageable for a lot of individuals. And that's what I've been trying to do with just videos, showing them, hey, this is what you're going to see. It's awesome. It's incredible to see what a lot of these racers are putting themselves through so that they can go straight on the track. And um it's worked out. It's it's worked out. I personally don't like to, I would say, overfeed my social medias with too much content. Um, I've learned on how to stay consistent with posting and how to not throw too much out there because at the end of the day, if I post a video and you know I don't post nothing for the following two weeks, that's two weeks worth of still engagements that can potentially go to that video versus if I were to post something else, it's going to just throw it off of that algorithm. I've done a lot of research on kind of how all these social media platforms work. And it's, it's kind of scary how they do work. But once you kind of got a good understanding, it's not too hard to just be able to throw the content out there. And there's, there's a lot of people out there that want entertainment, that are always going to look for entertainment. So 
if you're putting it out there for them in an entertaining way, they're going to respond to it. And that's all, overall going to be a good thing. I agree because even with us at World Sand Drag News, we have to, you know, we don't make posts daily like we probably should, but posting daily definitely helps more than posting once a week. So the more you put out there, you know, you may not get 650,000 on impressions on every post, but maybe one of those posts every week, you definitely get more than the other. Um, no and, doubt. And, and I want to just go back and say that sure. World Sand Drag News, everything and everything you guys do for the sport is fantastic. It's awesome. I appreciate the memes so much because they're on the West Coast with us. I see them more frequently, but everything that everyone does for World Sand Drag News and for our sport, Sand Drags, is just awesome. You know, you guys are able to bring in these racers from all over the world. You know, there's racers that I've met through you guys from Puerto Rico. And, you know, now I talk to them on a consistent basis. And that's just awesome because you guys truly are world sand drag news. And you guys are trying to tap into every avenue that you guys can with every single track. And I appreciate you guys doing that so much for even like our track, but for our sport, really. Thank well, you. We, we, thank you. Yes. Thank you for that. And we definitely appreciate everything that, uh, track promoters and track owners like your dad try to do for the sport as well. And that, you know, we all have the same goal in mind and that is try to grow it. So John, do you have something to say? Yeah. Uh, beyond PSDA, are there any other big special events you're working on that you'd like to host in the future? Um, anything on track improvements that are going on at the moment that you'd like to touch on? So we're super excited because, you know, it being February 4th, our timing system here at Don Valley Raceway isn't even a year old. It is a brand new timing system to us. So for our first couple of events in March last year, you know, we had a couple of hiccups because we decided to replace the entire system at once, you know. So there's just a bunch of different components that there could have been an issue at that, you know, we finally touched down on. And it's been awesome. The last three events we've had have pretty much been flawless with no issues whatsoever with our entire system. I actually just got off the phone the other day with uh, Porter Tree Timing Systems, and we will be redoing our entire finish line to where it's going to be now more of like an asphalt style track with the cone or the foam reflectors in the middle of the track. So if any vehicle were to ever go down the middle of the track, you know, they're not going to take out sensors that will cause us to be down for a couple hours. It's going to be as simple as, hey, go grab another phone block, set it where it needs to go, and we're off to racing again. Just to innovate, you know, because we have had a lot of spectators come out and, you know, we have to keep in consideration of their time, their experience, and making sure that we're able to go around a situation like that at a fast, reasonable pace for them to keep things going is definitely something that we're improving on. Um, our entire speaker system at our racetrack is now brand new. The FM system transmitter that we now have, everyone in their pits can tune to a specific channel and have everything broadcasted straight to the radio to them so that they can hear what classes are being ran, what's going on the track, what's the announcer announcing. And uh, just a lot of improvements going on here at Don Valley Raceway. We have a five day race coming up. So we're definitely making sure that everything's up to par for that because we got a lot of racing coming up. So I would most definitely say that PSDA is super, all of us are super excited for it. It's five days of straight racing. Most of these racers are traveling from across the country. You know, actually, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. We're, no, actually, we're recording this on the Sunday. So technically it is PSDA week officially. So let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I saw you made a post too. So we have a test in tune this weekend. PSDA is in, in uh, 16 days. Oh, shit. So oh. it's February February 20th through 24th. Oh, get a little excited there, Billy. I did get a little excited. Shit. Yeah, he's, he's ready for it. He's ready for it. I was. Damn it. But yeah, so the, the I'm PSDA... going to cut that whole thing out. So just the, the PSDA event is something we're super excited for. Uh, we're definitely expecting a lot more racers and more teams than we originally had in our first uh, event in 2021. So we're super excited for that. Uh, we do have an, our second point series event in March, and uh, we're going to be finishing off the point series in November. Uh, we currently, you know, are pretty popular with side-by-side -side events. As of right now, we don't have anything scheduled for the side-by-side -side community. Um, we are most definitely interested, and we most definitely hear everyone reaching out to us. And we are interested in putting on an event, but, you know, when it comes to putting on just a 
a specific vehicle event, you know, it, it does take a lot because obviously, you know, point series event, I have my top alcohols down to the world's fastest ATVs. You know, there's a variety of different sand vehicles that you can enjoy while there versus, you know, it's a little harder to promote just one vehicle type. These are by far the most extraordinary sand vehicles nowadays. These side-by-sides that you see from a lot of these racers and teams are, I would say, the, they build them to NHRA standards. It's insane the type of craftsmanship that they put into these uh, vehicles that I would always love to have them over, you know. And there's uh, promoters that handle, you know, that side of the sand drag world when it comes to the side-by-sides. Most definitely would love to have them come back in. We'll see how that looks in the future. Um, we will be hosting test and tune days, open track days at our racetrack. It's a little bit tougher, you know, towards the summer months because it is extremely hot here in Arizona. So we do plan on having a couple of just one days, March, April, as the time gets a little closer. But I would most definitely say our most exciting event this year would be our PSDA event coming up. We have races from as far as Puerto Rico, the racing lands that all these guys are just putting on awesome shows you know i can't wait to one day make a trip out there and check it out but yeah there's a lot of teams from all over the country coming and trying to put down big numbers and it's gonna be a good time and we're all looking forward to that it's always fun to see that definitely yeah and that, ricky talked about it last week uh, you know there's a michigan crew going uh the as you said puerto rico guys are going i bet that there's a small crew from texas oklahoma probably going as well and uh you know, you always have that West Crowd out there representing, and that PSDA race is going to be really exciting. And, uh, you know, we're going to be there to cover that. Not me specifically, but I know K-Dub will be there. I know Caleb will be there. So that's going to be uh, great content to look forward to for uh, uh, everybody to see. Um, and you talked about going going to Puerto Rico and going to other places. Um, you went to Lake Elsinore just their last race. Um, is there anything you saw like Elsinore and some things that you may want to incorporate into your program? Oh yeah, no doubt. A lot of racers, you know, just a lot of memorable faces and names that I know are going to be there because from Don Valley, you know, Lake Elsinore is only about a three and a half, four hour drive. So it's not too far at all. So it would be one of our neighbor tracks. I would most definitely say, you know, it was a great experience. They have an I loved their facility. I loved their setup. It was an awesome experience. I would most definitely say it was awesome to be at a sand drag event and not have to worry about doing anything or not having to worry about, you know, structuring everything or having a hundred phone calls a day. Uh, it was an awesome experience to be out there with the Hickeys. Yeah. The Hickeys invited me out there to go and enjoy and see everything. But for most of the race, you know, I'm sitting in the staging lanes. I'm sitting in the spectator areas, just trying to take in the entire atmosphere and it was awesome just to see the program that they have. They have the awesome, they had an awesome racer count, an awesome car count. It was just amazing to go through the pits, you know, and see all these racers. And, you know, I take, I take no offense, you know, that a lot of these racers wouldn't travel or don't come to Dome, you know. Um, I go because, hey, you know, I want to put a face on Dome Valley that they can know and they can see. And, you know, someone that they can reach out to. Because at some point, you know, I most definitely want to bring more racers to our racetrack any day of the week, you know, I'm always going to want that. But mostly, you know, I wanted to go and just see how things are brand on another perspective. And it was a great experience overall. Well, great. That's great to hear. I mean, you, great. You had a great time because I always had a good time whenever I go to a SoCal race. Uh, John, you well, had something else. Well, yeah, of course. I always do, Billy. Uh, do you have any plans to visit any other tracks? Uh, or actually, do you plan on doing some racing yourself? That's what we really want to know. Yes. Yeah, so as much, as much as I like to race, as much as I'd love to get behind the wheel, I used to, you know, I, I always like to say I used to race to the age to where they're like, okay, you know, you can start running things. So at that point, you know, I, I have a race car that is actually unfinished, un, 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 it got, you know, just stopped the process of building it just because, you know, it's at least at my track, whenever we're hosting events, there'd be no way I can do it. Sure. And uh, let alone, I always... As a track promoter, you know, I have to think of every possible outcome or consequence. And, you know, I, there's a lot to toasting and running and making sure everything's up to the par and standard that we wanted at. And, you know, I could just never imagine if something were to happen to me or if I were to get hurt or something, you know, and there's 60 trailers on the property, you know, that are expecting a great event. So, you know, 
I definitely am going to put other racers beforehand when it comes to our events in the future. I would, as long as I'm breathing, smiling and alive, I'm always going to love drag racing. So if there's the opportunity to get behind the wheel, I'm always going to take it. Most definitely in the future, I will be looking into that. But as of right now, my main focus would be growing our name, growing what we can in the sport and trying to build Don Valley Raceway the best that we possibly can. Totally understand. Great approach. You plan on going to any other tracks anytime soon? Yes. So I would most definitely say this year I am going to Gilbert, Louisiana. I am going to make the trip down to Gilbert for their for their PSDA race. I have to go check it out. I, 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 I love Jeff's chair. I love everything he's got going on out there. Jeff is amazing people. He helps helps me good people to have with him. So definitely want to take a trip out there and see how just, you know, another experience on how things are ran. PSDA events, you know, they're no joke. They bring in some of the world's fastest bikes, let alone, you know, the entry counts you're looking at. I remember for our 2021 event up to Friday's racing, we have over 400 entries for all of the classes just, you know, added up. Yes, it's the same bikes, but that's 400 entries, you know, so there's a lot of racing going on. And just to see, you know, how they're able to manage that is something I'm definitely very interested in and I want to go and just be able to absorb. Well, that's cool. I hope to have you at the Thunder Valley sometime. I'm sure John would love to have you out to uh, West Michigan at Silverback, you know. Um, Absolutely. Uh, don't count us out yet, you know. Oh, yeah. No, I would most. Oh, that's never going to count out. I would most definitely take the trips. <laughs> I know I definitely want to go out to West Michigan. We've had a West Michigan family come out and race with us here in Don Valley Raceway, and it's been a pleasure to have them over. So definitely want to go out and see their facility. I would most definitely say, you know, if – if there's grass nearby and the track for sand drags, it's beautiful and it looks awesome. And they have a great facility out there. And I'd love to go see how uh, Brody and all of them are running it out there. Yeah, yeah they'd love to have you out for sure. It looks beautiful. And I remember the first time I went, the views are just gorgeous. The way you're up on top and you look down at the track and stuff. It's one of a kind. But the views at Dome Valley are also one of a kind with the mountains in the background and uh, just being surrounded by basically the desert it's 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 really cool of a kind it really is and uh i always enjoy a trip out to dome valley and uh you know it's t it's where uh the fast and sand drags was ran at that's where dennis Reich ran the 216 where he ran the 220 and it's uh it's it's a horse it's a historical marker and we're glad that uh young pioneers as yourself are uh doing what you can do to keep tracks like that alive and still thriving in our sport that definitely needs some help. And we really appreciate you coming on and being on the show with us. Uh, I'm going to ask you for your one thing. Esteban's one thing is brought to you by S uh, excuse me. It's not SM engineering this time, you know, shout out Sam McRae. It is Lone Star graphics, Lone Star graphics, the uh, online printing service. They'll print your picture off on a t-shirt. You can even get it on, uh, plaques they uh, sell t-shirts photo plaques uh, winners plaques mouse pads custom awards license plates ceramic mugs canvas pot holders canvas bags canvas pillows and even more so go out to lonestargraphics.info check out their archives check out their products check out their gallery and you can see everything they have there their archives go all the way back to 2006 lonestargraphics.info you can order online and they'll ship it directly to your house, directly to your door. That is LoneStarGraphics.info, Lone Star Graphics, custom photographics and design, LoneStarGraphics.info. Esteban, please give us your one thing. Yeah, so I know we already touched on it a little, but I, I, I can't overlook it. One thing is going to be in 16 days, this PSDA event, we have over 55 reservations of trailers coming and it's continuing just to add up all the locals are now coming in getting their spots and the entire facility is going to be packed five days of racing that we have a lot of winter visitors that are looking forward to we're also going to have a couple of special appearance non-ATVs at this event that we haven't announced of that we will be announcing closer towards and we're going to just make sure that the fans have a very good show. They already have a good show in line with all these ATVs, but we're going to have a couple expedition passes and licensing passes for a couple of new big hitters that we have coming out of Arizona. And um, that's going to be my one moment. And going back to the sponsor that you just brought up, Longstar Graphics, we'll be making the trip out to the West Coast for our PSDA hey. event, and they right. will be at our event. And they're going to be taking care of all of our plaques for the event. So 
those original beautiful PSDA plaques that everyone loves to hang in their garages or man caves are going to be the exact same style that they've always been. That's amazing. That is great news to hear. I didn't know they were going to make the trip. So that is awesome to hear. So thank you, Esteban, for breaking that news right here. That is, man, that's amazing. You know, no, there's, there's not just one box. I'm stoked. 55 reservations for trailers. That means there's at least in those trailers, folks. Like, oh, oh, here. oh, and not, there's, not, there's, not in today's world. The entries, <laughs> no. the entries to this race are going to be insane. Everybody's excited about it. I definitely know Esteban is, and we appreciate your time, man. We really do. This is awesome. We love to have to have you back on sometime after the PSDA race and get your reaction of the uh race and all the stuff like that and uh man we're just really excited for you we really are thank you i really appreciate it no doubt i'll come on anytime you guys want this is a great opportunity i appreciate the opportunity and glad i'm here with you guys yeah thanks for all you do man we appreciate it hope you enjoyed that interview with s one a little short but glad to be with him glad he uh joined us and i'm sure he's having a great time right now at the race and don't once again, that interview from the interview with Esteban Juarez was brought to you by Mr. RPM Cycle in Denton, North Carolina. Designs, manufactures, and sells high performance engine components for Can Am engines and specializes in B twin engine. They have an in house dyno for all your mud and bog drag racing needs. They also have a full line of cams, heads, and they make an awesome billet. Excuse me. They make an awesome billet aluminum V twin block. They also do in house ECU tuning, big bore kits. Turbo, blower, nitrous oxide builds as well. Please take a look at Mr. RPM Cycle for all your V-Twin needs. Visit their website at MrRPMCycle.com. That is MrRPMCycle.com. And we're just going to keep talking a little bit more about the uh, PSDA race at Dome, the Pro Sand Drag Association race. And uh, we are still joined by Paul Moore, uh, Ricky Thorpe, and Caleb Mings. Uh, Kyle, or excuse me, K-Dub uh, came and went already. Appreciate his time. And uh, right now we're just going to get into some race picks. We're going to pick some winners who we think just not class specific. We're just going to pick some classes. We're going to pick somebody who we think is going to win. And I'm actually going to let Paul start it off. Go ahead, Paul. Dang, I get, I get, I get first pick, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh man. So man, I'm going to have to go and it's hard to, it's hard to go against the K and T camp. Man, I got so many customers out there running our stuff this year, man. Like, not only tire stuff, you know, I did the nitrous kit on, you know, Eric, uh, Eric's new little nitrous bike he's doing. I've got tire customers out there. Tyler Hart, man, I can't go, you know, Tyler, Tyler, you, I think just ran, what, like a 16 or something like that. You know, Tyler's a great customer, great friend. Um, him and I, you know, bounce ideas and shit we've learned, you know, over the years off each other. So I'm never going to bet against Tyler Hart. Um, but, uh, somebody else I'm never going to bet against, um, is my boy, Jared as a Medito, my boy out there, something, uh, something we're doing this year, more racing that, um, we haven't really put out that we're doing, but, uh, we actually sponsored two, uh, racers this year, specific racers. We, uh, I reached out to them, Jared being one, uh, you know, Jared, uh, represents the sport, you know, with the utmost respect. He's a fierce competitor. He's a great guy. Um, he's fun to talk to, you know, so, uh, we're sponsoring, um, Jared this year, we're going to, uh, send him a bunch of uh, apparel. Um, and we're also going to help him with some of his travel expenses later this year. I'm never going to bet, uh, against Jared. Um, and, uh, the other racer, she's not there, uh, that we're going to be helping out this year, um, is killer Kev, you know, she's, uh, she's rocking it out. Um, I think she's riding for the, uh, the Michigan camp this year, right? Ricky, some stuff. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what I that's what I'm uh, hearing. So, uh, you know, obviously I'm a big Killer Kev fan. Always have been. She's a great person. Uh, Jared also on and off the track. Two uh, couldn't have picked two better uh, young riders to uh, work with and help out for sure. Paul, that was a uh, pretty awesome. One of the many cool things you're doing this year, Jared. Uh, you can't ever bet. You ever ever count that guy has whooped my ass so many <laughs> times. I mean, dang. He's hard. He's hard to beat. Hard That's, to beat. Sure, That's a good pick, Paul. That's a good call. I guarantee by the end of the week, he'll have a pit. He has his little picture with the plaques. Every time he's done, he uh, he usually he usually stacks them up after a week, no matter where he goes. 
Mm-hmm. I sent him shirts the other day, and uh, you know, I asked him what size. I'm like, you know, hey, hey man, I'm like, what size do you need? He's like a large. I'm like, you fat motherfucker. Like, you know, like he's got a <laughs> girlfriend now, so he's getting he's going to be an XL next year. That's what he said. He says, well, she shrinks my shirts. I'm like, yeah, right. She swelled you up like a tick. We probably, that's, we, 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 pro- we probably don't even recognize him. He's probably been on camera six or seven times. He's out there looking like Arlo or something. We're thinking, you know, Arlo's on the bike. <laughs> next year he'll be a mechanic. <laughs> yeah, next Hey, next year he's going to be doing uh, walking around the pits, uh, doing live feeds with uh, us slackers. Like <laughs> he'll be in the weight <laughs> class next year. Yeah, definitely, uh, yeah. definitely. Good <laughs> pick, though, Paul. Jared's always a good, solid pick. Yeah, Jared's always a solid pick. That's that's really cool. That's really cool. Uh, Kevin Slater is also who he was talking about, if you didn't know who Killer Kev was. Um, yeah. yeah, solid pick. Uh, Caleb, your pick. Well, man, I was going to go with the California kid myself, um, but uh, me and the Paul took, uh, took Jared there. I'm going to have to say go with the man that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Caesar, man. Caesar, whatever he rides, he rides very well. And I uh, can guarantee you he is going to be the guy to be in the no-bar class especially. So I'm going to go with Caesar Cordero. All right, yeah, that's a great pick. Caesar's Another great solid pick. pick. Uh, Caesar's been on fire the last couple of years. The best no-bar racer in sand drag history, according to Ricky Thorpe. I I, I... – Find so let's let, I, someone wants to come on here and have a have a uh, debate that has a strong case against me. I would gladly accept. We will welcome <laughs> that. We will very much welcome that. We will very much welcome that. Ricky, your race picks for Dome Valley Pro Sand Drag Association race. Um, I uh, I I got a lot of um kind of like, Paul has a lot of customers out there. I got a lot of. A lot of people I'm involved with one way or another, a lot of friends out there, the Michigan camp, uh, you know, Nick Bennett, Eric Eshbaugh, you know, they're out there. Uh, they got a, you know, brand new full tie 525, I'm sure is going to be running real well by the end of the week. Uh, they got a bunch of, got a bunch of bikes out there. Um, and uh, I was going to be biased and take the Michigan guys like Bryson's out there. And obviously, uh I got to rock with my man Bryson, no matter what he's riding. I got I ride with him no matter what, and so I'm sure he's gonna do well as well. Him and Noah made the last minute long haul out there, but but if I were to make a pick for uh, someone that's probably gonna have a real solid performance out there, and we're on, uh, I would have to say my boy Jaden. Uh-huh. Jaden is. Uh, Unless Allie's got him tied down and he's uh, changed his, his uh, streak that he's been on lately, uh, I'm sure he's going to do real well. The family is is there. Uh, it's cool to see K&T really out there. It's hard to – a family that's done it all, what keeps them going? Well, they're really motivated right now. I think that uh, the boys will uh, have some strong finishes. So if I, I don't want to be super biased and – pick Bryson and uh, Eric and them from Michigan and just uh, uh, I have an honorable mention though and I don't want to if I were to make a bracket pick it's going to be Mr. Oh. Caleb Mings. Oh okay. Uh, okay. I w- is, is, yeah, are you going to run Mings. the bracket class Caleb? Yeah I'm, I'm going to run the bracket class on the weight bike. Um, my dad's been out there making some adjustments with it. I put uh, David Marco on it for a couple passes and um still still a ways off on that uh we're gonna be happy for the weight class but we're on some index and a bracket with it as well so should be a good time awesome are you and your dad both that's so you guys double entering like uh, will he have a bike in the bracket as well he will have a bike in in the bracket and then our plan is that he'll run the weight class bike in one of the index classes as well so we'll double enter the weight class bike in a faster and slower index and then uh, he's actually going to run the the 250R in the bracket class. Nice. Okay. Yep. Uh, main racing with my honorable mention because them boys will yeah. they'll guarantee they'll bring at least a plaque home this week. They're bracket racing dogs. Dang. Dang. Yeah, man. Shout out trying. to Randy. I Hell love yeah. you, Caleb. But shout out to Randy Mings. Shout out hey, to Cactus yeah. Cooler. My dad was part one of these. Uh, it was the the year after PSDA stopped uh, doing stuff at Baco. And he took home the the bracket class win at Bakersfield that year. I want to say there was like 50 or 60 entries in the class. Uh, he got a pretty good payday on there, and he was an absolute freaking machine 
nobody could touch him that weekend. So we'll see uh, what he can do. It was on a trike as well last time. So sticking to a trike, we'll we'll see. So I got to say something. Now that we made our picks, Billy, Billy, do you have a pick, Mr. Volkswagen guy? I do have a pick, and I'm not a Volkswagen guy anymore. There's only – three of them in existence in Sandra. <laughs> My brother-in-law is going to be pissed. Come on. <laughs> well, he's one of the three. No, I'm just kidding. There's plenty of them out there, but that's a, that's a different conversation, different episode. My pick for, and Ricky kind of mentioned him and I've always kind of talked him up when it comes to the weight class. And I love you, Caleb and everything you're trying to do, but uh, my pick for the weight class and maybe he'll win an index to class. Also, um, Eric Eshbaugh, he's just, such a he, I said it on that last episode when we talked about the weight class. He's a dog, and I think he's going to kind of uh, take control and kind of own that weight class this weekend. Once again, Caleb, no offense. Hey, I you know what? I'm going to give another honorable mention. I, I don't know if the Seavers are out there, but if yeah. they are, don't count out Andy Seaver. Yes, I, he uh, will you know, go Andy out Seaver. there and drill the tree. Andy. It was a, a 385 to death and kill everyone. He will. Andy actually took Eric out out there in the weight class last year on his, or uh, the last time on his way to victory. And, and I, oh. I just, I didn't even understand how a- Andy was just an animal out there last time. I don't know if they're there though. Andy might be there. I don't think Steve and, and uh, uh, his wife are there, but um, no, uh, to, mention you mentioned eric i think has won almost all of the weight classes that have ever had like i think other than like maybe two times a you he, he's been on a streak that's a good but can't is he gonna be i mean they probably shook him i up think eric will today, avenge himself so, eric's eric so he might come himself. back strong and uh fin- i mean he's got a uh, he has a pretty good record out there uh, with that weight class bike. That's a good. That's his. Uh, as Kata always yeah. called it, his hot hand. Yeah. The bike that. Uh, the bike that was running good. He always said the bike that was running best was his hot hand, and that green bike Eric has. Uh, is and he's sitting at the top of the mountain. But that weight. That weight that, class. That green um, bike. That green. Hold on. That green. Hold, let me just say something about Eric Ashford real quick. He's got that green bike is dope. That weight class bike is. Uh, I think is a little bit kind of feared whenever people see it out there at the racetrack and uh, he's going to overcome what happened today and he's going to have a great, he's going to have a great week. So let's go Eric Ashball. We'll go ahead. Ricky. Dude, he is going to give you a hug when he sees you next time, Billy. <laughs> he is going to give, he's going <laughs> to listen, Eric is my boy. And I got to tell you what, you just you made his, you, he doesn't even know what happened earlier. Now, if he sees this, he's going to fluff him up. I've always, always thought him as a. I've always thought him as a tough competitor. From when I uh, the Vader bike was a favorite of mine, the snowmobile bike that he runs, and uh, that's whenever me and Cody found out that our favorite noise on the planet is a uh, snowmobile on the two step. Is that a a ser- You like the, the that's your thing? It's the most beautiful sound on the planet. <laughs> Freaking Paul you know? over here. Freaking, hey, you're, Ricky, you're making me. Hey, Ricky, you're making. Hey, sound again. You're making me a little excited over here. Do buddy. it again, Ricky. Well, Just do I it didn't one more know time. how to bring up. I didn't know how to bring up. Paul doesn't run two steps, Billy. Hey, hey, but that sound you made. I mean, you I, might I start was, running them now. <laughs> yeah, I might start running them. <laughs> I just try to do what I can. I'm about the people, you know. I'm yeah. about the people. Yeah. Hey. So, hey, I got to tell you, can we do this once a month? Can we do the ATV panel once a month? Man, I'll tell of, you. Of course, yeah. You, we we'll to. have Ricky Thorpe on once a month for a power oh, yeah, talk. That's I'm not I'm talking saying. about me. I'm talking about this group of guys right here. I'm talking oh, about yeah. Paul. I mean, that's fine. Paul, can you, can you join once a month? Come hey, on, I'm a school. Hey, I'm a school teacher. Y'all just keep paying your taxes. I got plenty of sick days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what time is it? I mean, what time? It is 1046 my time. I guarantee you the kids in my class tomorrow are watching Bill Nye. Guarantee you. <laughs> <You're not, laughs> Bill Nye is still a thing. It's not, but it is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and get Caleb out uh, to Shelton's. <clears throat> we'll get Caleb uh, to Shelton's. Here's Shelton's the thing, because here's the... When Caleb and Billy, when you guys were both at Dome, in a perfect world, that's how it all needs. Every big Caleb needs to be in Gilbert, my personal opinion. Paul needs to be in Gilbert. Billy needs – I mean, uh, 
I know in the world we live in, we all can't be there at the same time, but for many a re- different reasons, uh, yeah, we need to have a the, the memorial race needs to happen. There's, uh, I would love to to help out with that. Uh, I would love to get Caleb out there. I wanted to get Caleb out there this past year. I want to, um, I'll tell you this, and we can cut this out or whatever. You can leave it on here. I, I, I would love to, uh, love to, um. Uh, Everything that happened, the race, it wasn't what it was supposed to be. And um, I would love to redeem myself on that. I w- did not do something I wanted. I spoke with you, Paul, about doing a memorial class for Steph in Louisiana. I decided against that because it, we need to do something in Shelton's. So we need to do... I would like, we need to do something. I haven't uh, been up to, like, I haven't been in the loop with uh, James or what. I know he's moving the track, and I know you've been busy. I know that everybody has a lot going on. So if we uh, if we want to get together and make something happen, I'm always for it. Uh, I'd love to get Billy out there, Caleb out there. Uh, I'd love to. Um, listen, the sport's hot right now. We'd love um, to help the, with anything with that. The time, the yeah. time is, the time is now, Paul. I've been saying that to you in our private conversations over the recent months or whatever. Um, the t- uh, the time is now for look, look, this whole side by side thing. It could be the beginning of a revolution. Who knows what we're talking about two years from now? I didn't think uh, four years ago. I didn't think. We're gonna run 290. That's incredible. You when that when you guys did that in 2020, um, you know that's uh, you know, and someone that followed closely with Steph and and you guys and everything uh, you guys all did. And and, and I I'm, I'm a fan of the sport uh, before anything. Uh, so that you know, K and T running at 298. I watched that with my own eyes. That was incredible. Uh, Tony Miller, his. All these bikes going fast. These side by sides are going to run two nineties. It's only a matter of time. Twin Banshees are going to run two. Listen, seven seventy five, nine hundred cc class twins are going to run three O's. They're going to run close to two nineties, if not two nineties, sooner than later. And uh, a lot of people might call me crazy, but we're talking about no bar or knobby tire bikes that are running three teens. And I hate to just start rambling right now, but uh, this is my final take, as we'll call it. You the time is now. Like Ten minutes. The, the time is now uh, to. I think twenty twenty four is going to be a huge year in a lot of a lot of different ways. Uh, I would love to work with, you know, I lo- you know, Paul, we do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. I need to do more stuff. I love getting on here with the, the podcast. This is my second time on. I think this is awesome. I'm terrible at being able to, uh, K-Dub says he's a terrible, uh, what do you call himself? A terrible, uh, he, shoot, I'm the worst one in history. I can, uh, I, I love, to- I'll talk to everybody at the track without getting a single picture. Dang. Uh, <laughs> but I, I want to, I, I listen to, t- I went to no prep Kings. I've seen what people can do from flatbed trailers to toter homes. Right. And in my opinion, cycle drag coming out to Louisiana, 1320 might be making an appearance soon. You guys are get covered. I watch YouTube videos all day. And at least when I'm at my house, just hanging out and the, the WSDN videos from Louisiana or wherever they listen, long story short, my ADD is kicking in full steam right now, but I hope that we can get together <laughs> with some other people and uh, make 2024 a, a great year for the ATV side of things. Because um, in my opinion, as far as I can remember, and I hate to say the quote, like, you know, like I've been around or whatever, but I literally have been around majority of my lifetime has been with bikes. And this has got to be one of the hottest, if not the hottest times in the sport I've ever seen. Well, dude, I, I mean, it is pretty hot right now, everything that's going on. And uh, the fact that Dome is as big as it is this weekend is really helps as well. 
No, I agree. And, it, you know, it helps the whole sport. You know, people are talking about it. People are excited about it. It doesn't just help the racers get excited, man. It helps the, the small businesses. It, it helps the chassis builders. It helps, you know, the tire manufacturers, you know, like, you, you know, I mean, when people are excited about the sport, when people are talking about the sport, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's a good sure. thing. And, and if we don't, you know, we don't keep talking about it and keep moving things forward, you know, um, there's whole, whole industries that depend on, depend on us racers and us promoters to try to get this stuff you know, cooking like scat track right now has laid off half their people. Okay. Um, oh, wow. ju yeah. Just because like, like I talked to them today um, and they're, they're just slow. You know, they're just slow. And, and, you know, I, I think it's, um, you know, I think it's important that we, you know, we, we keep progressing. We keep talking about the sport, you know, um, you know, we keep posting bike pictures and we keep things exciting and, and, and doing bike bios and, and rider profiles and stuff like that, just to, you know, keep the ball rolling on the sport. Um, you know, so we, we appreciate everything you guys do and, um, you know, and, and the, you know, the Memorial race, we'll talk more about it, Ricky, but you know, it, it, it it's always meant a lot to us. You know, um, Brandon was a, a local small town guy, close to the, the to the heart here um brandon spalding and then um you know the the whole reason you know we were down there the day of steph's accident was was getting ready for the memorial race you know we, we had weed eat it and we had we had mowed grass for four or five hours you know or before we even did anything that day and uh you know it was all for the memorial race so you you kind of started it and and got the ball rolling on it and, and man we'll touch base but i think we need to just really you know, keep keep the momentum up with it for sure. You definitely uh, will. I think uh, Ricky talked till his battery ran out. Uh, yeah, I think his battery. I think his phone there. died. He's not. Yeah, <laughs> his phone died. He, he checked out. He 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 lost the Wi-Fi connection. But uh, but no, guys. And you too. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity to be on here. You know, anytime you you plug us. Anytime you get me on here, it helps. You know, with everything that happened in 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 our personal life, losing Steph and and things like that. Um, you know, I think she would be proud of, of of the decision to keep moving forward and to keep doing the stuff that we love to do. And um, you know, it's an it's an honor and um, it's a it's a privilege to be here with you guys. So thank you. Well, thank you, Paul, thank for you. joining us. We really do appreciate your time. Uh, plug what you do real quick. Yeah. So you know, check us out on Facebook. More racing. Um, you know, we've uh, definitely hit us up for your parts, scat track tires. Um, you know, we've been doing some giveaways and some stuff like that. We're going to be dropping some new apparel here in the short term, some more racing stuff. I've even got some, uh, some cool stuff making fun of Ricky, uh, and his, his, uh, kind of lack of attention, uh, and uh, always being late to the party. So I got some stuff coming out, uh, with that. Um, and, uh, anything, anything you guys need, any questions we're here uh, and I like it. Got the rock the more racing shirt right now. Uh, that we sent Billy last week. So uh, that's right. we appreciate it. Uh, you know, um, that's, my man. that's right. Yep. So hit us up with your parts or questions, man. You know, I'm not a Banshee guy, but uh, you know, I've been around it enough. I, I can give you some bad advice about like, about like anybody else. So, uh, you know, thanks for, again, for having us on and supporting us and uh, you know, keep an eye out on that turbo chassis giveaway that we're going to be uh, doing later this year. Once again, Paul, thanks again for joining us. And thank you for our listeners for tuning in this episode on behalf of Caleb Mings and myself and Paul Moore. Y'all have a great night. We'll see you next time. All right. See you guys. Thanks.